Go. Hi, everyone. This is Professor Charles Wood, again, from Duquesne University, with some questions that you might get on your ASP interview. These are technical questions, and uh, here we go. Let's do the uh, first question. What is the web config file and what's it used for? Now, the web config file is very important. It contains all the configuration, the database, the uh, names, uh, uh, even for some uh, controls, uh, the web config file allows you, you to store information in a secure environment so that other uh, 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 hackers have a hard time getting at it. The server doesn't provide that information easily. It's a very nice way to keep all your configuration separate from your program. So if your program gets out, the configuration inf information that people can use to hack into your site does not get out. So uh, most people use the web config file quite liberally, and you should. Okay, the second question is, what's the difference between OLADB and ODBC? These are database connectivity questions, so that how do you connect to the database? Uh, ODBC is very old, it's an open database connectivity, and it's, Microsoft came up with it so that you can connect to multiple databases uh, using the same internal code. So if you wanted to switch from uh, Oracle, say, to SQL Server, you switch the databases, but you don't switch the code in your program. You don't need to rewrite your code. It's very nice, but it only works with databases. OLADB works with all sorts of data sources, including databases. Um, most people say that ODBC has uh, uh, been absorbed by OLADB and that everyone should be using OLADB from now on. Um, I think I agree with that, too. So, uh, you know, if you want to use fax information, phone information, uh, email information, uh, voice over IP information, all that is uh, available in OLADB. You can write uh, 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 routines that provide the information to you. And uh, so that's very important. Okay, next, what is the use of global.asax in your VB.net environment? Okay, the global.asax is a file that controls a lot of the HTTP handling, so uh, especially the session variables. If you want to use sessions, you pretty much have to use global.asax. But don't worry, because when you make a new uh, uh, project, the global ASAX is thrown in there for you, so you don't have to worry too much about it. Okay, the next question is, what's the difference between a response redirect and a server transfer? Okay, response redirect tells, sends a message to the client machine that says, hey, I know you wanted to go to my web page, but go to this web page instead. This is when you move a web page. Uh, a server transfer doesn't tell the client machine anything. It says, I know you wanted to go to my web page. I'm going to go at the server level, grab information from another web page, and give it to you, the client, without telling the client anything. And so uh, many client machines say we do not want to use any response redirects. Uh, we don't want to be redirected when the server tells us to be redirected. And so they, they immediately stop you from redirecting them, whereas a server transfer allows you to re redirect them without actually redirecting them. In fact, your URL will still appear on top of their client machine. Uh, so uh, a lot of people, uh, it depends on what you want. If you want to keep the your URL there as you're providing information from other web pages on your site, say, then probably a server transfer works better. If you want to wash your hands of the client and send it on to its merry way to another page, then a response redirect is probably more appropriate. Okay, and then finally, what's the difference between web forms and MVC? Web forms came out first as an outgrowth of some of the classic ASP, the pre-net stuff. Um, they're very nice to use and very easy to use, they're very easy to understand and easy to learn. MVC has a slightly larger learning curve, but most people think that Microsoft came up with MVC to speed up development. Uh, and, and that web forms someday is going to die. Now, whether or not that's true is another story. Microsoft says it's not true. But the, the uh, uh, web form uh, is probably good to use if you have a bunch of web form developers already. If you have a web form developer, there's no need to make, uh, put in a new MVC pro products when everybody else is doing web forms. They won't be able to work on your stuff. But if, uh, on the other hand, uh, if you uh, have new development with new developers, you might consider MVC. Most people consider it uh, uh, better. The final thing that you want to be sure of is that the, the uh, uh, I've heard 
uh, people talk about how grids are better on web forms. And I know that NBC people would say, that's horrible, that's a lie, grids are fine, and Ajax grids are way better on NBC, and I agree with that. But I kind of agree that if you want to put a grid on a page that's easy to use, a web form is really simple. Um, but uh, um, it's up to you, in other words. But if you had the choice, I would move towards NBC, uh, because it seems to be where the cutting edge is, and development seems to be a little faster overall on large projects. Um, okay, so. Thank you for your time, and if you could, visit my YouTube site where we can get information on this and other questions that you might run into. That's Charles Wood. That's my YouTube site. And then also, I have some books on Amazon that you can buy that talk about technical topics. So click on those, buy them. Some are free. So check it out and see what you, what you like and, and uh, uh, check everything out and let me know how things go. Take care. Bye.